What's up YouTube, Eugene here, and today we've got Guerlain Heritage. This is the Eau de Parfum concentration and Heritage for the heritage that this bottle houses, a lot of the classics from the past. And this is really the last great Guerlain before Jean-Paul left the brand for, you know why. Um, he did go on to create some more of the harder to find exclusives. Um, some of the Lupin Dandies, Spiritus Double Vigny, and uh, some things from the Aqua Allegories. But really, this was the last big, big thing that came out of Guerlain before uh, the name, the, the family uh, ended their, their tenure with Guerlain. And after that, Sylvain Delacorte came on for a while and she was really founded by Jean-Paul while he was working on Heritage. She was over in cosmetics development, a young Sylvain. And while Jean-Paul was working on this, he was working alongside a, a bunch of other fragrances trying to decide on which perfume to release and he had called Sylvain over and handed her three blotters and asked her to select one and she returned to him uh, the blotter with heritage on it and together they they finished it and from there he trained her to be the next creative director she went on to uh, start the arts and material line for Guerlain she uh, spearheaded the Charnel elixirs um, did I think 68 Parfum in the Cologne and, and did uh, she was responsible for L'Enstant de Guerlain for men and women and also did some Aqua Allegorias before she had left to start her own brand and you know the story you know Terry Wasser took over from there but really um, this was the end for Guerlain um, you know what this is the bottle was inspired by the folk cult pendulum, so a device that hangs from the sky um, on an open axis, and whichever way the bottle rotates tells you the Earth's rotation. Today, the bottle has been repackaged and inspired by much more interesting things, such as Listerine mouthwash. But um, really, this is, you know, I get a lot of. Uh, heritage you know this is the first time Guerlain had openly used the term Guerlainade to represent a lot of the signature notes accords which involved florals and fruits and um, you know the peach the iris the elang the rose the jasmine the vanillas the tonkas and this is classified as a woody oriental it's very patchouli dominant to me especially in in the base um, opens up quite harsh to evolve into something really smooth and beautiful warm classy uh, so it is a woody spicy oriental a woody spicy ambery oriental um, but you know within that genre it's quite clever how they did this actually you know like Baccarat Rouge 540 is clever in its technical aspects. This is genius. So within that woody oriental genre, you know, they created pockets of subgenres. That that fougere twist at the top. You had that that barbershop fougere, that jicky uh, shaving cream, that sh uh, shaving foam, that warm foam, that lavender, that harsh lavender in the top, and you had that that. Uh, vanilla twist at the bottom, that Guerlainade, that Chalimar, Labdanum leather, uh, vanilla tonka in the base. So there's a lot going on in here. It's extremely complex. Like it's layered, it's tiered, it's faceted and nuanced, and it all really comes together brilliantly and perfectly. Like, you know, the opening is extremely harsh, like really, really bitter harsh. Um, the dry down is, it's warm and cozy and smooth and creamy and it's just like, you know, the perfect well-fitted suit. Not like today's suits where they're really stiff and skinny and, and what do they call them, the slim suits. Back then in the 90s, 
suits were a little bit more boxier, but they looked a lot more classy, you know. It was probably double-breasted was in style. Um, I, can't, I, I can't imagine it being anything similar to, to what suits look like today, but... So in the top of this, you get that, you get a lot of this harshness, mostly coming from lavender. It's that combination of lemon and lavender, which they've taken from Jiki. So it's giving that uh, barbershop fougere accord, that, that uh, genre, that twist. You know, it's got the Yanis, which they borrowed from Lure Blue and a lot of other Guerlain classics. They've really uh, perfected Anise, you know, the spiciness of Anise. Um, the darkness of anise, um, they've taken that and they've added it, combined it with lavender in here to give it that really warm uh, shaving foam. So it's got that lemony uh, shaving foam twist, that fougere cord. And we've seen, you know, Jean-Paul's done this many times uh, recently, brilliantly. He's added with uh, Derby, he's got that, uh, the Sheepra cord with the fougere top. So he's just really a master of combining... Uh, genres together and, and and they really come come into their own as one uh so that harshness to me really exemplifies you know the harsh lavender opening to this um within that harshness there is some kind of there is some soothing quality to it you know it's got some kind of calm and relax almost like the calm after the storm because the opening is very like Whoosh, it's abrasive, it's strong, and um, you know, it's got that warm shaving foam, it's got that calmness to it, and it, it kind of to me represents the morning of the man. You know, the man wakes up, he gets out of bed, he's he's a little bit groggy eyed, he's got the bed head, the natural oils have come out, the stubble, you know, the stubble's growing, he's got to go for a shave. So that's what it exemplifies to me. Ah. Uh, so the heart's got, it's, it's this really big floral accord. I don't part, pick up any florals in particular, you know, the rose or the jasmine or iris. You know, it just really makes for this really warm, soft floral accord. I wouldn't even call it feminine or masculine. It just, it just is florals. But within that floral accord, I get a lot of green earth tones, um, something pine solly. Uh, juniper, cypress, balsams, very incense-y, um, outdoorsy, pine tree, pine needles. And you know, pine needles are very sharp. I think uh, if you've ever touched a pine needle, you know, they can prick. If you've ever stepped on pine needles barefooted, you know those guys are sharp and they will stub your toe. And I think that kind of that pine leads to a little bit of that abrasiveness in the top, but it does have... Uh, quite a bit of greenness, outdoorsiness, and it reminds me of uh, that greenness. It really reminds me of being outside at, let's say, the base of a mountain on a cold, crisp day. The ground is blanketed with snow. You can see your breath, and you know your mind is focused. Your mind is clear, and you know no worries, no thoughts. You just know everything's going to be okay. You know those days when you're outside and. And it's so cold where you can't think and you're just kind of in the moment, in the present moment. And, and you're not worried about the past. You're not stressed out about the future. You just know everything's going to be okay. That's really what, you know, the green aspect of this perfume reminds me of. It's not, it's not green like cut stems green, but it is more woodsy green. I get a lot of wood tones to this, almost like old wooden cabinets where you've just hung up your, you know, your, your, your freshly dry clean suit. I get that smoothness. You know, the way a, a smooth suit feels, a, a freshly ironed or, or cleaned or steamed suit. It's got that smooth tones to it. It's, this is really, um, it's got a lot of that smooth qualities to it. So it, it opens up very, very harsh and then just starts to transition. Like it goes it's, it's sharp, the opening's sharp, almost like a violin, you know? The violin is really high-pitched, and then it kind of dries down or morphs into this big cello. You know, cellos, they're not high-pitched, they're low-pitched, but they're, they're more well-rounded. They're a little bit easier on the ear. Uh, 
And then the base, you know, I get I get a lot of the patchouli, uh, a lot of the textured patchouli. Um, it's abrasive. Again, it's aggressive. It's uh, gritty. You know, it's it's got a lot of that sandpaper quality to me. And I feel like, you know, this bottle here, the older bottle, the, the Focal Pendulum style bottle, has got a lot of that good uh, pre-IFRA stuff. You know, the lavenders, the patchoulis, the oak mosses, um, maybe even a little bit of castorium in that leather, that labdanum. It, it, it gets a little bit dirty to me, but I feel like, you know, I still got those good fibers before the regulations uh, process them. So I got that, the pit, the fiber, the pulps, you know, all that good stuff, the stuff that is now considered allergens. Because I can feel, you know, just the richness of this is on a much higher level than on perf than perfumes that are released today. Um, you know, there's still real patchouli, real lavender. Um, I don't know about the oak moss, but it just doesn't have that texture of what is inside of this bottle. The base, you know, it dries down to a very familiar uh, Shalimar, very vanillic uh, Tonka. I'm not a huge fan of Tonka, but Guerlain's always used it very respectfully and very carefully and not overly sweet. And here they've used it in the sense where it's almost like a uh, leathery, creamy, warm, and They've taken that grittiness of patchouli, the, the earthiness, you know, the brown, the brown tones, the green tones of the patchouli, and they mixed in some tonka. So if you picture, if you were to picture the patchouli like a strip of sandpaper, very jagged and, and crisp and sharp, and you know how uh, sandpaper shaped, and they've taken, you know, Jean Paul's taken some, some tonka bean and he's melted it, he's warmed it up until it came into liquid form. And he slapped it on top of that sandpaper and it just kind of smoothed it over with a butter knife and just filled in all those sharp edges. And, and now it's just warm, creamy, and smooth. But you still get that earthiness from the patchouli. Uh, get some tobacco in here. Not, it's not very prominent, but you know, there's times I feel like there's tobacco, fresh earth, green tobacco, uh, warm, dry tobacco, never overly sweet or you know, that cherry pipe tobacco that is so common with Mugler or um, let's say even like the Parfum de Marly tobacco. None of that stuff. It's just really warm and earthy and green tobacco. Uh, you know, you get that le uh, leather. I get kind of this leather castorium feel. Almost reminds me of... Uh, Let's say Anteus, you know, Anteus has got that leather and, and castorium combination where it's, it's, it's slightly animalic. It never really goes dirty though. This never goes funky territory on me, but it does have that, that oomph to it. A little bit of that growl, a little bit of that, that purr. Um, yeah, the amber is a nice amber in here. Very, like it, it, this golden hue. It's like this halo of ambers around you. That's how I feel. It's like ambers, resins, uh, you know, that your sweet tonkas and vanillas and and stuff like that. A little bit churchy. I always, uh, I get that good churchiness from here. Incensey, dry books, uh, leather bound books, wooden pews, uh, you know, like an incense-y, smoky church. And it kind of reminds me of, you know, a couple of modern things today. And you know that saying, you know, like, I wouldn't be who I am if you weren't who you are. And, you know, the same could be said for, for things today. Certain things wouldn't be what they are if Heritage wasn't what it is. And you can say that for, let's say, Le Lyon de Chanel, which takes... Um, I'm not saying it's a copy or anything, but this has definitely paved the way. It's led the way 30 years prior to a lot of these things. So, you know, Le Leon definitely takes from this genre. Uh, Mitsa takes from this genre. Uh, Ombre Nui, Spice Blend, Ombre Sultan, you know, they all kind of take from this. Um, but not just that, there's, there's, there's other genres that take from this as well. You know, this is kind of... Um, 
not only is it a spicy oriental, but it's got that that sheepra base that that you know the oak moss uh, leather that that's done today, like let's say New York Intense or uh, I don't know what else has come after here, but it's got that you know that leathery oak moss thing that you find in classic masculines, but. Uh, yeah, that's that's really what this is to me. It's just um, really well done, really smooth, really refined. So it opens up very harsh, and it just it's got this really beautiful transition to it. And throughout everything, you've got this huge golden halo resins, woods, spices, uh, very spicy. I get green coriander, uh, pink pepper. Um, anise, you know, the anise in the top is very spicy, very reminiscent of, of Lure Blue. So I do get, you know, heritage from Jiki. Uh, I see a little bit of Lure Blue in here. Um, maybe, you know, I've got Voldenui here in front of me. It's taken the mosses from Voldenui um, and Shalimar. But, but more so than anything, I get Jiki and Shalimar from this. And what this is to me is a representation of, you know, an end to the beginning, the, the last great Guerlain. So all things do come to an end. And uh, this does get kind of lost in the shuffle from, from all the classic Guerlains, you know, uh, Jiki, Lure Blue, Mitsuko, Shalimar, Voldenui, Shamad, Nahima, Abiruj, Vetiver. So there's just so many great ones that um, if it does get lost in the shovel, you can't really, it's not, it's not no fault of its own. It's just there's so many great things coming from Guerlain. And, you know, it's really a representation of, you know, the beginning and then the end. It's the end of a dynasty and the end of a, the era of master perfumers from Guerlain. And after this, they've sort Shortly after this, you know, they sold to Louis Vuitton Hennessy and, and Jean-Paul was, he obviously got, you know, he was removed from, from the brand for, for reasons that, you know, but uh, that's what it is. It's the end of a dynasty, the end of something really special that I don't know if we'll ever see again, a family dynamic like this of all master perfumers. You can say, you know, uh, from the beginning, they were amazing, and then they just eventually got better and better and better. It's like whatever um, Aim Guerlain learned, he, he passed down to, to Jacques, and Jacques passed down to Jean-Paul Guerlain, and it was just, you know, master after master after master. And you can say the same, you know, so with that theory, you can say now that Thierry Wasser is the best ever because he's learned from Jean-Paul, who's passed all the information prior, but I think... You know, the unfair part to uh, Thierry Wasser is uh, a lot of, it, it is really unfair to compare them to because a lot of the ingredients that you're, they're using today aren't the same as, you know, what, what they've got in this bottle where, where it's really, it's, it's not pure today, it's more pure, it's more processed, but in here is more real, it's more the good stuff, the allergens is what we want, so. Um, it's almost like we need an asterisk after IFRA came in, but it is kind of unfair to compare Thierry Wasser. Not only is he playing with a different, uh, he's playing with a different lineup, but you know he's also under a different ownership where where he's almost manipulated into trying to create things to sell and to move units instead of creating beauty and art. Anyway, uh, if you've smelled Hedy Taj, drop a comment down below. Let us know what you think about this beauty. For me, it's five out of five masterpiece. I always look at perfumes when I'm rating them or, or judging or, or, or just trying to put my thoughts on them as if I'm the creative director of my own brand and the perfumer has come to me and said, you know, I've got this perfume. Uh, are you interested in it for your brand? And if somebody had come to me with Hedy Taj, I would take this in a heartbeat and I would make it, you know, the, the showpiece of my line. It would be on full display right in the center. And I would say absolutely yes, a million times over. Um, just a very beautiful, uh, gentlemanly fragrance. 
I don't like the masculine term. This is more gentlemanly, somebody that's thoughtful, uh, somebody that's got empathy and sympathy and, and, and is very supportive, you know. That's who this is for. So we'll see you in the comments down below. Let us know what you think about Hertage, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.